Welcome to lecture 3 of Machine Learning Foundations. Uh, this is week 5 and uh, in this lecture we will introduce the concept of a unitary matrix and uh, these matrices, unitary matrices are very important uh, in the context of diagonalization of a Hermitian matrix. Uh, these are, uh, you could see this unitary matrices as a natural counterpart uh, of what we have seen before, the so called orthogonal matrices in the context of a real vector space. Now, we will try to, we will define what a unitary matrix is and uh, understand uh, uh, some important properties concerning the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a unitary matrix in this lecture. But before that, we have to look at a very important, another important class of matrices called unitary matrices. These are the equivalent of orthogonal matrices that we have seen before. So, the definition a matrix is unitary. If, if it has to be a square matrix, but that is not enough and has orthonormal columns. Now, if you go back to the real case, uh, so what we had was you had matrix satisfying something like this we called a orthogonal matrix. See, it's equivalent to saying Q is orthogonal, which is like saying that if I take any two columns of Q and take the dot product, then it is 0 and the length of each column is 1. Yeah. So, this is like saying equivalent to saying uh, the if Q is say Q1 until Qn, then Qi transpose Qj equals 0 for all i not equal to j and the length of this is 1 for all i. So, that is orthogonality. Now, the complex counterpart of this in the complex case the counterpart is a unitary matrix, let us denote it by u and instead of just the transpose you have to take conjugate transpose and still recover the same thing. This implies u is unitary. Okay. Now, yeah, q transpose and if q transpose q is identity then that just means Q inverse equals Q transpose, the same thing and Q inverse equals Q star. So, that is a unitary matrix, these are just the complex counterparts or generalization of uh, orthogonal matrix that we have seen before. Let us look at an example of a unitary matrix. Don't confuse unitary matrices with Hermitian matrices. Um, these are two different concepts. As homework, I will leave this. Check that U is unitary. Another example, if you want, uh, take u equals cos t minus sin t sin t plus cos cos t. Okay. 
again check the scene check if this matrix is also unitary now as in the case of unitary matrices are required for diagonalization so let's uh, look at some properties of unitary matrices very first property call this as uh, length unchanged that is if i take uh, for this let in all of this let u be a unitary matrix that is u star u equals identity so if i take any vector then if i apply u then its length is unchanged can show this uh, proof so if i take any two vectors ux dot uy so this is the same as the conjugate transpose of the first one into second one and ux star is x star u star uy but u star u is identity so this is x star y equals x star y so this implies um, square equals ux dot ux equals x dot x equals mod x square that's the end of the proof so a unitary matrix does not change the length of any vector that it acts upon the second property is eigen values of a unitary matrix u have absolute value one that is uh, that is if lambda is and we are not saying the eigen value is real please note of u then we are saying that its absolute value is one but not Uh, necessarily real so lambda is not required to be not uh, not necessarily real and the proof is again short so so we have ux equals lambda x just to emphasize this is x not equal to 0 also norm ux equals norm x implies what is ux lambda x equals norm x plus norm slope value of lambda into norm x equals norm x this just implies lambda equals 1 and norm x not equal to 
Now, if you want another one line proof, uh, you can just reinforce the same another proof. I mean the same idea. I'm just writing the same thing again. Uh, so you take u x dot u x. The same as lambda x dot lambda x. Now this is equal to lambda into the second lambda comes out as lambda bar into x dot x. Now is equal to x dot x. Now this implies lambda into lambda bar equals 1 or this is the end of another short Now these two properties are a little different from what we had for Hermitian matrices. Again, a unitary matrix does not change, uh, change the length of a vector. And the second thing is it has its eigenvalues have absolute value 1. But a property that it shares with Hermitian matrices is this. It's that um, eigen vectors corresponding to different eigen values of a unitary matrix are orthogonal. We can show this from first principles again. Let's do it. We are given u x equals lambda 1 x, u y equals lambda 2 y, and lambda 1 not equal to lambda 2. Now we have to look at what do we need to look at x dot y. We already know that you know u does not change the length, so x dot y is the same as u x dot u y, but u x is lambda 1 x dot lambda 2 y. Now this is the same as lambda 1 bar lambda 2 into x dot y. So, what we have is x dot y on both sides. So, I get lambda 1 bar lambda 2 minus 1 times x dot y equals 0. Now, this would imply x dot y equals 0 if we show lambda 1 bar lambda 2 is not equal to 1. So, so we will do that by contradiction. Suppose lambda 1 bar lambda 2 equals 1. Then you get an easy contradiction because lambda 1 bar lambda 2 into pre multiply by lambda 1 on both sides equals lambda 1. Now, using absolute value of lambda 1 equals 1 from part B. lambda 1 into lambda 1 bar equals 1, we get lambda 2 equals lambda 1, a contradiction. I can call this equation star. So, lambda 1 bar lambda 2 is not equal to 1, implying x dot y equals 0 from this instance. 
Now, why are we looking at uh, Hermitian matrices? I'll just get, give a preview before uh, ending this lecture. Uh, so, uh, coming next for a Hermitian matrix A, we can find a unitary matrix U that's that A is U lambda U star and that is a diagonal matrix with eigenvalues of so this is the reason why I introduced unitary matrices. So we'll look at why this decomposition holds. So this is the classic uh, spectral theorem in some form for Hermitian matrices. If you specialize this to real symmetric matrices, then you get the uh, <coughs> then you get the spectral theorem. So well-known spectral theorem. This for the real case, what we have is for a real symmetric matrix A, we can find a orthogonal, we can find an orthogonal matrix Q, let us transpose Q as identity, such that A is Q lambda Q transpose. This is really the this is one way of stating the spectral theorem. So multiple ways of stating this. This is one way, one way of stating the spectral theorem. So we'll be proving this claim uh, in sufficient generality for Hermitian matrices, and uh, the real, real symmetric case follows as a easy corollary. Before I wrap up this lecture, uh, I would like to summarize. Uh, uh, the contents, uh, what did we see in this lecture? Uh, firstly, we saw, uh, we defined what a unitary matrix is and this matrix uh, will be used uh, for diagonalizing a Hermitian matrix uh, which is coming next. Now, uh, we saw some two, we saw a few important properties. The intuition is that a unitary matrix when applied to a vector does not change the length of the vector. Uh, so that is one thing that we actually showed by using the definition of a unitary matrix. And the second thing we sh showed about the unitary matrix is that you know the eigenvalues of a unitary matrix have absolute value bounded above by 1 uh, which is like saying that uh, they are all within the unit circle, their magnitude. And the uh, last thing is uh, a claim that we had shown earlier also for Hermitian matrices. If uh, uh, two eigenvalues are distinct then the corresponding eigenvectors even of a unitary matrix are orthogonal. Uh, coming next, we'll use unitary matrix uh, matrices to diagonalize a Hermitian matrix. That's in the forthcoming lectures.